Hi, thanks for gardening with me. I'm Melissa and today I'm going to take you through a few of the videos that I put together of um, how I built the greenhouse and some of the steps that I went through. Uh, we're about three-fourths of the way there. Um, I still have to put the front wall on and do the interior, but um, it's just about ready. So this is the back of the potting shed. This is where the greenhouse is going to go. It's going to be a lean-to on the back of the potting shed and then there will be a door where you can go into the potting shed from the greenhouse. The materials that I am using is the same materials that were used on the potting shed. So even though it's not going to be the exact same size, it's going to flow and look like hopefully it's one piece um, that was always intended to be that way. I will link a video that shows the renovation of the potting shed. It was just a normal shed to start out with. Um, I painted it and redid the whole inside. So it looks great. Happy how that started out. And before I begin any project, I'd like to draw out to spec um, using the graph paper and with graph paper you can have every square be a foot or six inches or two feet or however you choose to do it but I do recommend using graph paper when you draw your um, measurements out because then you can relate to it when you get out, out in the field and actually start building. Um, this is the side wall that has the six windows on it and then I have another graft for the front and the back as well. Now I did make some changes because when I got out and actually started building I decided to go from having it 10 feet wide to 8 feet wide and the reason I did that is the panels that I used, the polycarbonate panels for the roof um, came in 8 foot sheets and so if I wanted to go 10 feet I would either have to have um, roofing material on the top or I would have to combine two of the different polycarbonate roofing together and then you may have leaks and it's just not um, not ideal so I just changed it up went two feet skinnier hopefully it won't matter down the road but um, if you have any questions over this please let me know be happy to kind of explain to you how I came up with these measurements and these specs and this is the instruction sheet for the polycarbonate uh, roofing material that I did use. Uh, the brand is Tough Tex. I got it from Lowe's and um, this sheet was really invaluable to me because it showed me all the different materials that I needed to buy and how to install the actual roof. Here the next video is all of my roofing materials and the wood that I got to get started on the greenhouse. I did make several trips to Lowe's to get um, more wood or different things that I needed throughout the process and I do have a sheet where I wrote down all the materials that I needed and if you would like to have that then I can put a link to that at the end of the video. Let's see digging post holes while I'm sitting here eating a protein bar. Get it, Les. Building her greenhouse. I'm debating if I should help or not. Just kidding. So during this video, I will be doing a lot of voiceover. Um, the reasons for that is I'll have the nail compressor going in the background, and also I fast forward through quite a bit of it. Otherwise, this would be a 20 hour video that nobody wants to watch. Uh, for the most part, digging the post went really smooth and easy. Um, it was a little muddy, so it did stick to the post hole digger in quite a few places, but um, it was really nice to have the help of my strong husband when it came to this part. So when you're putting in posts, you want to make sure that you go below the frost line level. In our area, it is three feet, so that's how these are buried. And then I went by the instructions on the concrete 
bag and it says to um, just put the concrete in the hole and then add the water later, stir it up, compact it. Um, after I do that, then I, um, or before I do that, I put these little side pieces of wood on that way I find my level, then I get the sticks to hold it in level while it cures overnight and I let it dry for at least 24 hours. Here you can see I am painting and cutting the ledger boards to um, fit against the building and also going along the posts. I like to paint before I put them up in the air. Just so much easier to get the job done when um, you're not trying to paint overhead while you're hanging out on a ladder. Um, here you can see Tony and I putting the ledger boards onto the building. Now when I and doing a lot of the uh, putting the wood in place on this building project you will see that I am using a nail gun I am NOT having that be the permanent way that boards are attached to anything I just like to do that because it's an easy way to put it in place and keep it where you want it to be and then later I go back with carriage bolts and bolt it into the building and then also bolt it onto the posts. Um, and then later on, even when I'm putting in my studs, I will put them on first with a nail gun. Um, a lot of the times I am doing this building project by myself and you can see throughout the video just different ways that I use to keep the boards in place. Um, being a ladder or just a spare piece of wood and nail it into place and then I'll come back later and screw everything down. So if I'm using this bevel gauge properly, then that means if I sit it just like this along the edge, that I draw my line there and that should give me my perfect um, angle, but I think I'll bring it in a little bit just to give me a little bit of room for air there. So that should be my proper angle. I'm hoping that I'm right. <laughs> and the cut on the end joist was good. So um, before I am ready to put it in place, as you can see on the bottom of the board, I put in a um, just little piece of wood, screwed it in, easy to unscrew. That way I can rest the board on that while I'm getting it in place. I also start my screws on the ground. That way when I have it up there, all I have to do is screw it in really quick and easy. Um, it just anything that I can think of to help myself along while I am by myself, um, it just makes the project go so much easier and I have learned this over time so um, it is an eight foot board so there's no way that I could hold it up there by myself get it in place and not have it adjust on me while I am trying to screw it in and here I am just doing the opposite side the exact same way holding things in place and then at the end I do paint the end where I cut it. Um, it is pressure treated two by sixes but I want to make sure that I don't have any exposed parts. Here you can see me hanging the joist hangers. Um, I only nail in one side that way I can have the wood rest in there while I am screwing it in on the other side and then I will come back later and um, nail in the other side of the joist hanger. It's just a much easier way to hold it in place while you get things together. I did use a um, clamp to squeeze it together to get it tight enough because there was no way to get it tight enough by hand um, to nail it in. So the um, clamp worked really, really good in this spot.
here I'm starting construction on the walls. These are the studs that I already do have painted. So um, get these cut to fit and take them over to the other side. It's always more convenient to have your area right next to where you're cutting, but man, it was hot during this whole phase. And the greenhouse is in direct sunlight for 90% of the day, which when you are deciding where you're going to plant where you're going to put your greenhouse, make sure that you do that. Make sure you have it in a spot where it's going to get the most amount of sun that it can possibly get because you're going to need that when you want to start seedlings in the middle of January and there's not a whole lot of sun to be had. Hey, Corey. You got a second? Oh, yeah. Just a quick one. Just because I don't trust myself to not break this entire thing. <laughs> Would you rather be on this side or that side? Whichever side is easier for you. Well, I'm already here. <laughs> so. so this is going to sit on the outside and this wood's going to sit on that wood. Okay. And just scooch it all the way over. Great. Thank you. So a huge thank you to Corey for coming over and helping me out. That window was heavy and awkward just for one person to put it up. I didn't want to risk falling, having it fall and breaking because it was um, a really nice one that I got from Habitats for Humanity. I'm not quite sure how much it was, but it was very inexpensive. I got it from the one in Lancaster. So I just finished up a little bit more on this wall, and then I moved to the flashing, which you want to put that around your windows so that um, none of the rain can go in underneath the window and destroy your stud that you have um, holding your building up. So I think that that is hugely important even on a greenhouse. After that I move on to the purlins, which is the um, little pieces of wood, they're about two feet long, that go in between the joists for the roof and that's just so you can screw the polycarbonate into that just to give you a little more structure so it doesn't raise up or have any problems there. Um, I think that was the end of that day and then my husband came and um, cut off all the 4x4 posts that we had uh, now that I have the um, outside joists on, um, it was time to cut those away. Then he also helped with the flashing. So flashing, I don't know if it was 100% necessary or not, but I wanted to have some flashing up there um, coming off of the potting shed, hanging over the polycarbonate just a little bit, and that way I wouldn't have to worry about any rain getting in there and uh, causing any problems down the road. So the main goal that I have for today is to get this wall as close to finished as I can. Um, the, I have the windows here that was given to me by my dear friend, um, Cheryl, that lives across the street. They don't have frames on them though, so I can't just put them up and, um, expect them not to leak so I had to build frames for them and that has been a real time sucker for today so my other really great friend Dana gave me all this vinyl here so I had to cut it down um, it was in really long strips I think um, 16 feet long maybe so and nine feet wide so I had to figure out what kind of measurements I wanted I marked them on the back uh, which I didn't bother cleaning um, but then I had to clean all the front. Um, they were covered in a plastic, but the top one, the plastic had come off over the last year that I've had them. So I had to wash all those, get them cut down to size. Now I need to um, put them around the windows, make sure that I have all of my dimensions correct. And uh, then what I'll need to do is put a stud up here, going that way. And um, yeah, then just, assemble them hopefully hopefully i measured and cut them all perfectly um oh my gosh i hope so so as long as that happens then i should be able to at least get this window in today the next step is to put um this siding on which is the same thing that's on the potting shed 
so it just needs painted. So in order to do that, I'll have to cut around the windows and then I'll be trimming it out and things. So you can see as I go along, but that is my main goal for today. So nothing left, but to get to it. I'm gonna end this day right here. I don't know what number day this is. This stuff has been absolutely crazy. But I did get two rows of purlins done today. And then I got this wall done, which I feel really good about. I still have to trim around the windows and um, put the cinder blocks around the bottom and the gravel. But um, it's starting to look good. And here we're back at it again. So very thankful to have the help of my husband today. Um, in theory, every one of these purlins should be able to be cut the exact same size. But um, as I said, I'm no professional. So some of them were off by an eighth of an inch or more or less. So we measured and cut each individual one before putting them up. So very thankful to have my husband's help for this. Um, after we got all those up, we got I think two more of the polycarbonate roofing panels on so uh, so exciting after that I think we have like one and a half panels to go and then the roof will be finished we're gonna end this day right here I had Tony's help today so that was really nice probably have three, maybe four more boards to put on. And then the roof will be done. And the next day I'm back at it again. This is the long wall. This is the wall that's gonna have the six windows on it. So um, just time to get this wall studded in. So I got this wall framed up. I would say after I get this up, I'm more than halfway there. Um, and now I just need to decide because I was going to do the windows that I have on this table. So I can open this one halfway, open that halfway because they hinge in the center. Um, or I can just completely open one or the other, which will be nice. Um, this is going to be the same setup for this other side here but um, one of those windows is a little bit longer. And that's just kind of what you have to deal with when you're using, you know, things that were just given to you. They're not gonna be exact and you just gotta kind of make it work, but they are the same height. So um, that's really all that I'm concerned with. So right now I have that from there. I need to put, um, so I need to put this window sashing 
window tape around the out this wood and then I will have um, the frame of the window made out of vinyl that I'll have to make next and that'll be on the outside that you will not um, see the stuff with so here we go my scissors are going to be absolutely ruined by the time I get through with this hopefully I can clean them up with some um, denatured alcohol that's the hope anyway Here you can see I'm putting the paneling up. Um, you may notice that I don't have any studs on top of the windows yet. I do go back later and put those studs in, but um, for some reason I thought it would be a better idea to do them after I had the windows in, or maybe I wasn't even thinking at all. But I do go back later and put the studs in on top of the windows, and it also helps to keep um, the windows from sagging because they are really heavy. I do also put in studs underneath the windows um, because they need all the support that they can get. They may look perfectly fine now, but if I didn't do that over time, they would definitely sag in the middle. So, and this is the finish of today. Um, I'm just gonna have to call it quits here. I'm just exhausted. The heat is just way too much. So that's really what I wanted to get done today. So I'm glad I was able to do that. Um, I did accidentally cut this so I'll have to put some wood filler in there um, but there's trim that goes around this window anyway to uh, make it a weatherproof seal so I'm not too worried about it of course I still have to trim the top as well but it's coming along I would say I would call that halfway done and that's pretty exciting Next day, here we go again, and thankfully I have the help of my husband finishing these purlins. I don't think that I mentioned it before, but the purlins I used uh, two by threes. So, um, and then cut those around two feet um, length and put three on for each um, paneling that we have. And I think that that will be just plenty to give it enough support. Then we get the uh, polycarbonate multi-panel roofing on and the reason that I went with that versus the um, kind of roofing that's wavy is I thought that it would just give me a little bit more um, retention of the heat in the winter time. Hopefully that's going to be the case. Um, we will find out soon. Much pressure than I can put on it. What you doing babe? Putting screws in. On which piece? Final piece. <laughs> <laughs> final piece. It's the final countdown. The greenhouse roof is officially on. Thanks to my wonderful husband who helped. <laughs> And 
here we are again doing the last set of walls on this side. I'm just going to kind of buzz through this really quick um, because it's just the same thing that I did for the last set of walls. Um, I have to mention though that the measurements, um, they were a little tricky. You have to make sure that you get your measurements perfect. Um, which some of them are not perfect, which is why I'm doing trim, because um, you definitely want to have a tight seal. You don't want to have any places where the weather can get through. So always, always, always measure twice, cut once. So this is the gutter I'm getting ready to install and then I'm going to be attaching a rain barrel to it. So um, never installed a gutter before so it uh, should be pretty interesting. <laughs> Here we go. So obviously I am no gutter pro but I did watch a few videos on how to install it and um, all the pieces that you need to put a gutter system together are all right there in the same spot at Lowe's anyway. Um, the second piece I did have to cut to fit because I had to put a um, little section in there that I could attach the downspout to. I did use painter's tape to just kind of hold it together, but once it was in place, I used um, the sealant that comes with it to make sure that it has a airtight and watertight fit. So this brings me to the last section that I will have on this video. Um, stay tuned for part two where I finish up the trim on the outside and then get working on the uh, final wall that will have the door on it, the flooring, and the interior walls. Um, so basically for this part I um, had to take off the 2x4 that was on the bottom. Totally did this backwards. <laughs> um, put some landscaping fabric down, put pea gravel down, and then I set the cinder blocks on top of that. Then I put my 2x4 back on, and um, I had, hadn't really attached the studs to the bottom 2x4 until now, so got that all finished. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that this inspires you to get out there and maybe build your own greenhouse. Um, I'm definitely not a professional construction worker. Um, but I was um, definitely able to put together a few more things. I also hope that this gives you a little more empowerment to use uh, power tools because it's not as scary as you may think. And the most important thing when you're doing construction is math. And that's something that um, I think that most people can do, especially with the use of a calculator these days. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll be glad to help you in any way that I can. And I look forward to seeing you in part two. God bless. Have a great week.